Listen, I said semolina. I don't even know how you managed to get salmonella, and especially a case of it. Uh, it's just, I... Let me call you back. What's going on, guys? My name's Rob Cologne, or Bobby, depending on how you know me. And I'm from Cologne Pizza Consulting, a group that is intended for helping businesses and everyday people with their pizza needs. Whether it be, you know, standard business operation, or recipes, or just random questions. So, I decided to do this little Q&A, and I had a pretty good response, and I want to get started right away. So, by no means am I uh, a guru, especially when it comes to home pizza making. I know a lot of you uh, make pizzas at home, and... The thing is, I always had a kitchen, and I always had a pizza oven. Not to say I haven't made pizza at home, you know, I know about making small batch dough and stuff like that, but I just always had the restaurant, so if, you know, if we were closed on a day, which we never were, but like say Easter, we were closed, and a few friends were like, oh, let's go make a pizza, I'd go turn on the oven, let it heat up, make, you know, so it was a little different. Um, there's a few good books out there. Uh, this one I got recently. Um, pretty good recipes. I enjoy it. Uh, and that's Pasquale. This is actually uh, considered an antique now, I guess, which is so weird. I had one of these as a kid in one of our pizza places. Yep. Obviously, it's not hooked up, but that is the hang-up button. And you're talking to his uh, feet, and you're listening to his shoulder. If you guys have on any of these, let me know. These are awesome. That was only like 15 bucks on eBay or whatever. Um, but other than that, let's get into your questions. All right, so the first question is from Rick Rangel or Rangel. I'm not, I'm sorry. His name's Rick. And he said, uh, how do you transfer the pizza into the oven so easily? That's been my hardest challenge so far. I got frustrated and just cook on metal pans but would really prefer to cook on the brick oven floor and other people have chimed in here uh, Garrett Riles says it's all how you work your tool <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, Peter Daniels says cornmeal cornmeal is an option but I have one that I prefer um, Jacques Eldiger I'm sorry guys uh, yep try a little cornmeal everyone says cornmeal hold on uh, Rick says, maybe that's why my issue, I have a metal peel. Mm -hmm. Jock said, uh, first work some flour into the peel, then each time you use it, add a tablespoon of cornmeal. And then Jock said, try the cornmeal on, it might work. All right, so your peel, it does matter. When you're using a wood pizza peel, water is your enemy, any kind of moisture. So I use a mix of 60% flour all trumps 40 percent semolina semolina is it's almost the consistency of cornmeal but it's not cornmeal and i like to use it you can use whatever cornmeal i use semolina whatever 60 40 mix and you make sure that there's no wet spots on your dough at least on the bottom like when you're flipping dough you can feel which side might be a little more wet Always put the drier side on the peel and make sure you have a good amount of semolina and flour on there. Next, find the spot in the oven. Don't hold your paddle at an angle. I, I just told a kid the other night he was trying to put a pizza in. They go in the oven and they go like this and they're holding it up and then they try scooting it back. And all you're going to do is push the pizza on itself. It's going to get scrunched up. You go in flat. Go on the spot that you want to be on, say you're in the middle spot front, a little tilt and start shimmying left and right. If you have to, like, you know, I do, get your dough and put a little air under there. So now you have the flour, which is absorbing any kind of moisture. You have the semolina, which is like little marbles that help it slide off. And you have a little air underneath there. A little bit of an angle, left, right, left, right, shimmy like this and back up as you're doing it and you should have it on the spot. Um, other than that, it's practice. 
the uh, next question we have is Kent Coleman. Why is my dough tearing? I've tried different flours, recipes, hydrations, CT and RT. Can't get it to stretch like a pro. What could I be missing? Uh, there's an answer here as well, or um, a couple. But unfortunately, I can't get it right now. So I'm sorry. Um, depending on the dough that you're using. So a lot of home chefs are doing a lot with like pre-ferments like uh biga and polish which i'll get to trust me um i use a cold fermentation technique which most new york pizzerias use um you know i'll do a video on how to make big batch of you know dough but um if you're having trouble with your dough tearing don't change the recipe if you like your recipe. Like, if you like the recipe, but it's just a little hard to work with, let it sit out at room temperature a little bit longer. And if you have to, use a rolling pin. I always tell people, get the dough as big as you can on your work surface before you put it on the peel. Don't sit there and work your arms to death trying to, you know, get it to get bigger. Put it on your work surface, granite, marble, whatever. You can use a rolling pin, form your crust, stretch it on the table. There's a good video on my page of how I stretch on the table and get it to the size you want. Technically, you can get it as big as you want without even tossing it. So let it sit out at room temperature a little bit more, you know, let it get soft. Try a rolling pin just until you can get a dough recipe uh, that can allow you to have more stretchy dough, a little bit more tougher dough. I will be uploading a video soon enough. Next we have Kate Jackson. I've known Kate ever since Catholic school. Uh, we go way back and I just hit my desk and I knocked over the light. Incredible. We are on a roll. <laughs> Let me fix this. Fixed. And uh, you know what? You guys can see me. That's fine. I just, I'll leave it. Uh, she doesn't really have a question. She just has more of a statement. Uh, I feel like all my relationship questions can be solved with pizza. Um, that's fair. For the most part. I mean, if you're looking for um, some sort of like comparison, uh, you know, like a relationship, it needs to be strong, but it needs to be, you know, tasty. And uh, pizza is like sex. Like even when it's bad, it's still pretty good. You know, like, I guess you can. But then she said, I don't think the pizza world is ready for the, uh, the question I got. And then she didn't say the question. So, Kate, if you watch this, I need to know what that question is so I can answer it for the next video. Next, we have uh, Christina, Andy. I hope I said that right. I've known her for years and I just never asked. Is it and? Is it Andy? Um, I've known her for a long time anyway. Uh, why is it that pizza has not broken my heart yet? Um, that's because you're chubby. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm joking. She, obviously, she would flip out when I'd say that. Um, she's not. She's not fat, by the way. I, I was just, I was joking. Um, pizza has not broken because pizza's pizza. I mean, how can it break your heart? It's there for you when you need it. It's my version of comfort food. Um, actually anything with like sauce and like sauteed garlic and sauteed onion, like tomato sauce, some kind of carb, whether it's pasta or pizza with like Parmesan or mozzarella and like some kind of protein, like steak, chicken, pork, whatever. Like that for me, that's heaven. I don't care where I go, where I end up, you know, if I'm on death row for any particular reason. My last meal has to incorporate those items. Um, yeah, so there's that. Next, I have uh, Mike Gallagher. Best advice for an amateur pizza maker. This can be anything uh, to positive advice, to resources, to tips and tricks. Um, and then Mike, oh, best. Yeah, he said. Uh. So it depends when you say amateur pizza maker, what is your end goal? Are you trying to be a top level home pizza maker? Are you trying to get into the uh, pizza business as a business owner or as a you know pizziolo, as a pizza maker? 
So I need to know what you're trying to accomplish, but the best advice I can give for anything, and you can apply it to anything, because my dad always said it, is practice makes perfect. And I know everyone says it, but he would say, uh, you know, someone who can make pizza or someone who's made pizza for six months and they're like yes i'm a top pizza maker and it's like no you've been listen i can ride a bike but you won't see my fat ass in the tour de france all right i can ride a bicycle i am not a professional uh i can throw a football you won't see me in the nfl just because you can make a pizza you know doesn't put you at the level of some of like the top tier pizza makers um, but it's not impossible to get to. You just have to practice. Ask questions. Always, always have an open mind. Ask people that you want to learn things from. You know what I mean? And ask questions, even if you're afraid, like, you think it might be stupid. There's no uh, stupid questions. You know what I mean? At all. I, I mean, if you're asking me, like, is that dough? And you're pointing to dough, and I'm like, yeah, that's dough. I mean, even that... If someone who's never seen dough, I'm not going to freak out. But it, just practice, man. Watch YouTube. Oh, my God. Today's technology age, you can watch YouTube videos. There's podcasts. There's instructional DVDs, if you still want to do that. There's so many ways to get uh, information out there. Um, so, yeah, I would just say practice. Actually, even if you're not like, if you're not kind of like a shy person, go to your local pizzerias and ask, be like, hey, can I work a couple hours? Like, behind, I can't make pizza, but like, you know, I'll go get you cheese, I'll go get you sauce. If I can watch you and ask questions, and most pizza guys would be cool with that. Business owners might be a little bit of a issue, but you know what I mean? If you're cool with them, I would definitely ask. I mean, if someone came in and asked if they could hover me for a few hours on like a slower night, I would totally be down with it for sure. My brother, Rafael Colon, asked uh, how much for two large cheese anchovy, and my brother spelled anchovy wrong. Raf. Anyways, it's roughly $32 with tax. Um, oh, I had to screenshot one. Uh, uh, hello. Between the Biga and Polish, which do you prefer for pizza dough? Thanks. Oh, and that was uh, Bridget Sampico Smith. Here's the thing. I know Biga and Polish is this very hot topic in the pizza community right now. But in all of my years in the pizza business, I've never heard those terms once. Only from watching like YouTube videos in the last few years and reading like, you know, books on pizza have I heard about uh, Biga and Polish. And my preference is Biga. I like a little bit more of a bite to my crust. And basically what it is, uh, it's a pre-ferment. So you have like standard dough or direct dough, whatever. And that's like your flour and your water and your yeast and your salt. And that's like your basic dough. And then you have indirect, which is usually the same ingredients, but with a starter. And you have Biga, you have Polish, you have sourdough. Um, and basically, you're just getting the fermentation process started before you add that to the dough and mix it in, stuff like that. But the reason I've never heard it over the years is because most New York style pizzerias and most pizzerias in general are not using pre ferment because they use the cold fermentation process in which you make your dough and you scale it, you roll it, and then you put it in the fridge for anywhere between 24 and 72 hours. And that's how New York dough is done. Uh, we get a longer shelf life out of it. We can work with it without tearing it. It's not like sticky and stuff like that. Um, but again, there's nothing wrong with starters, especially from like, you know, the home cooking perspective. There's nothing wrong with it at all. I prefer Vega. Um, but pizza's pizza, I'm sure I can find good in anything. Um, there's another question from uh, Alam Mabub, and it, he's asked, uh, how can I uh, take the dough for my pizza, for my style pizza to the next level? What makes a dough better than the other? Should I try pre-ferment, pull up, 
Figa, etc. The New York style pizza dough. What will the difference in dough in pizza and Y style if I use yeast versus sourdough starter? So there's a lot to that question. And basically how I answered the first one uh, should give you insight into this question, which is basically the reason many New York style pizzerias do not use pre-ferments is because of time. Um, the restaurant that I'm at, we go through between 100 and 300 pizzas a day. That's uh, roughly two to four batches of dough a day that we have to make. We have to keep up with so we don't run out. Because obviously we can't use our dough two to four hours after we made it. We can, it's tough. There's some tricks that you gotta do, like placing it like underneath the oven where it's a little bit warmer so you can, there's things you can do. Um, but should you add pre-ferment uh, to your New York style dough? You can. If you don't want to use instant yeast or wet yeast, um, you're gonna have to scale it up, but find your pre-ferment and add that to your dough. But make sure your dough is nice and cool because you're going to be refrigerating it. If your dough is warm, like at room temperature, and you're trying to work this like 150 pounds of dough to cut into a bunch of dough balls and it sits out too long, you're gonna just have an overblown mess because pre-ferments, that dough, it rises, it's ready to cook within hours. So again, like I said earlier, when you're making so many pizzas, you have to keep up with it. The shelf life of a New York style dough just lasts longer, but you said, how can I take my dough uh, to the next level? How you cook your dough is going to give you so many different endings. Are you using a conveyor belt oven? Are you using an uh, air deck? Are you using a regular brick oven? Um, are you using gas? Are you using uh, wood? There's so much to cooking the dough that makes it different. But again mess with your ingredients a little bit keep your yeast about the same if you know you're making a 50 pound bag of flour don't be tossing like three times the amount of yeast you know keep the yeast about the same um sugar and salt you can kind of don't put too much salt because you're gonna have a real tough time with dough actually <coughs> that's how like the professional pizza tossers make their dough so tough is they make a batch of dough and they just toss in a whole bunch of salt and it makes it super tough and you know for tossing and stuff like that it's fine so don't add too much salt but yeah mess around with your sugars um check out your levels give yourself time like maybe before putting it in the cooler you let it sit at room temperature for an hour and then put it in the cooler um that'll give you a different type of rise i mean there's there's so much that you can do with just the dough alone um it's kind of vague but I'll think about that one a little more and I'll get back to it. Next, John uh, Johnson Silva says, uh, don't date anyone who hates pizza. I agree. Um, I, not really a, a question, but good advice for sure. Uh, Ryan Welch says, how do I get my ex-girlfriend back? Well... Do you really want her back? <laughs> I know that sounds messed up. Um, so maybe evaluate the things that you guys had in common that got you guys together. Like say you guys are both fans of football and you guys are both fans of pizza and you know, through the, your interest, you guys became friends and then you took it to the next level. Then assess the things that you guys were never on the same uh, level playing field from the get-go. Maybe, you know, you're a liberal, she's a conservative, whatever. You know what I mean? Evaluate that. Look at the reason why you broke up, whether it be a stupid argument or something that was long going. And then finally, analyze all that stuff into a pros and cons list. And if the cons outweigh the pros, right? Maybe it's better that you guys are not together. But 
maybe the pros outweigh the cons. Maybe you guys just needed some time apart and, um, you know, whatever. It, you you want to get back and maybe she's on the same level and you said that you're going to change and maybe she doesn't believe you because you've said that before and this and that. Uh, give it time, obviously. Invite her out for some pizza as a friend and just talk about, you know, hey, listen, I know where I messed up or I know where you messed up. Um, don't say that. Don't say it like that for sure. Um, but just say, you know, I think it's worth giving another shot. I think there's so much more that we can get out of this, um, you know. And if not, like, if she's not down with it, you know, whatever. You got, you got a pizza out of the deal. Like, it's literally a win-win. So, good luck, buddy. And I saved this question for last. Uh, this is from Robert Hood, and he asks... I'm starting a pizzeria soon, and my main pizza guy has only used a conveyor oven. How difficult will it be for him to learn on a deck oven? And my actually answered this. I didn't answer it. I, I commented, oh boy, I can't wait to answer this one. And then for a quick answer, all I'll say is be patient. Somebody else said something. Yeah, let me read what he said. Uh, Brant Stebbins. Just make sure he uses timers and he will learn fast. I taught a 17 year old kid in just three days who never cook. Teaching someone in three days does not make them a professional. It makes them able to put a pizza in the oven. So if you're selling 15, 20 pizzas a day, like from two to four o'clock, you only get two pizzas. That kid can probably put a couple pizzas in the oven, no problem. But on a Friday night, when you have 40 tickets behind you with multiple pizzas on each, you know, three days isn't going to cut it. Um, but I'm not discouraging him. If he keeps up, you know, and he continues, he will get better. Absolutely. Practice makes perfect. Oh, boy. There's a reason I saved this question for last. Conveyor belt ovens are garbage. <laughs> Hear me out. Hear me out. Conveyor belt ovens are responsible for some of the worst pizza not in america in the world and i'll tell you why there's a reason all the major chains use conveyor belt ovens pizza hut domino's papa john's little caesar's cc's even though they just went bankrupt i mean all of these chains use conveyor belt ovens because one they're fast Okay, there's no doubt about it. Conveyor belt oven is pretty fast. Um, it's not the fastest in the world, but for the style of pizza, it is fast. Like, yeah, a wood-burning 800-degree oven for a very thin Neapolitan pizza, like straight-up, you know, Italian-style pizza, yeah, you can cook that in a few minutes. But we're not dealing with pizziolos. We're not dealing with professional pizza makers. Uh, the, the other thing is all of these chains, they use either pans or screens because it's much easier to teach somebody how to push dough in a pan or how to get, you know, roll out a dough, put it in a machine, whatever, and put it on a screen. You put it in this end of the oven and it rolls through, rolls through. I'm just watching the camera. Anyways, when it comes out here, it's done. Anybody, anybody can do that. And that's why the chains use conveyor belt ovens. It's easy, it's quick, it's convenient. You put your dough in a pan or a screen, you throw on your toppings, you place it here. When it comes out here, it's done. They do not cook pizzas correctly. They're not even remotely like good, but Again, they're popular because of these chains. And I guarantee you, the original Pizza Hut, the original Papa John's, all of the original restaurants like that started these chains did not use conveyor belt ovens. But I know why they use them. I would never use one. How hard will it be to get him to work on a deck oven? So there's a few ways to go about this. First thing, 
does he know how to make pizza on a pizza peel? Or has he only ever made pizza on screens or in pans? Half the battle should be taken care of. He can put dough in flour, flour semolina if you're doing it right. He can get it on the table, he can work the crust, and he can make it a certain size. Now, instead of pressing it on a screen or putting it in a pan and pressing it out, if you're using screens and pans in, an, in a regular deck oven, which you can't do, <clears throat> I mean, he's pretty much only got to worry about one thing, which is the timing. Um, but if you're using a pizza peel, you're going to have to be very patient because getting the pizza off of the pizza peel multiple times, uh, he, he's bound to mess a few up. And earlier I answered the question on how to do it and stuff like that. So just be patient, let him make a few and, uh, you know, get the hang of it. Timing is going to be a whole other issue. There's pizza guys out there who can probably make 10 pizzas in 10 minutes and they put it in their conveyor belt oven and someone else takes it out down there and it's fine. A real pizza man can fill up a 12 pie oven. I have, I use a six pie, six pie, 16 inch. I can fill up that oven. And when I put the 12th one in, the last one, in about 30 seconds, my first pizza I put in is coming out. To be able to know all the spots on your oven, because different spots cook differently. The back corners are usually a little bit hotter than the front. The, the sides are a little bit hotter. So you gotta know your oven. So he's gotta get used to that. He's got to remember, you know, you can't check the oven 20 times in a minute. You, you know, grass, watch grass don't grow or whatever they say, you, you know the saying. Um, so let him start out with putting in like three pies and then he can concentrate on the cook time. You have to spin it. You can't just put a pizza in a deck oven and then just take it out. One side's gonna be lighter than the other. You want nice, consistent, so you are gonna have to spin it. The best thing I would recommend is if you want to full force go with this guy as your main pizza guy, get someone, either you or hire another employee to watch the oven. If you're anticipating it being busy enough that you're going to have, you know, 10, 12 pizzas in the oven at a time, take that stress off of your pizza guy and hire somebody to just work the oven. All they do is spin pizzas, take them out, put them in boxes or, you know, trays if they're for here. They cut them up, they put them together. So the pizza guy only has to worry about making pizza because if he's done conveyor belt pizza, uh, he's going to have to learn and get better at making New York style using a pizza peel and stuff like that. If you're using screens, he doesn't have as much to worry about or even pans, um, but the oven will be a little bit of an issue. I would recommend hiring a second person in the beginning, maybe even for the first year. And then say your weekends are busier than during the week, which usually in the pizza business, Friday night's your main night, Saturday night's usually pretty good too. And then you just have a second guy on the ovens, say Thursday through Sunday, you know, and then he can also do prep work when he's not busy and, you know, things like that. So basically it's be patient and don't put too much on this pizza guy right from the beginning. You don't want him to get overwhelmed. You know, pizza guys were sensitive. And <laughs> so I think I answered most of the questions. If there's anything I missed, uh, you know, comment in the uh, comment section below this video i'll get to it in the next round or if uh, you didn't have a question but now you do just leave it in the comment section below this video i might not be able to do this very often but at least you know once or twice a month so go ahead leave your questions in the bottom i will get to them as soon as possible i hope i was helpful enough um you know answering your questions and if there's anything else you want to see from the Cologne Pizza Consulting page, uh, you know, let me know. Uh, the video I made for the Big Stromboli is at like 15,000 views right now, which 
blows my mind because that's cool. I would have never expected it to get so big. And all the other videos are doing well as well. So if there's anything, you, I know everyone, everyone's been asking me like the two main questions. What is your dough recipe? How do you make dough? How do you, I'll make a video on how I do dough. I will, I promise you that. And you know, a lot of people ask about the dessert pizzas cause I make a s'mores pizza, a peanut butter jelly pizza. I make this really good like fresh fruit pizza and it has like the, the sauce on it is a mix between like uh, vanilla yogurt and like strawberry cream cheese. And then you have fresh blueberries and strawberries and banana. Oh, it's so good. Um, I do like a caramel apple pizza. I do, I do a bunch of dessert pizzas and everyone asks, is that regular dough? Is it special? And it is special. And I'll be making some videos on that soon. Plus, you know, some of my other specialty pizzas, the taco pizza and you know, the chicken and broccoli Alfredo, the penne alla vodka pizza. I got tons of specialty pizzas, but also just your standard run of the mill, you know, things you need to know in the pizza business, uh, you know, videos, maybe this week I'll make a couple calzones and show you the difference between that and a stromboli and all sorts of stuff. But I'm having a lot of fun doing this and I love talking about pizza with other people who are passionate about something I'm passionate about. Um, such an awesome community and I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of people, um, like, I don't want to sound like egotistical here, but like a lot of people like admire, like my story and my advice, like, Oh my God, it's so cool. You've been doing this forever. And like, you probably know so much. And that's actually how I started the consulting business. But for a long time, I never thought of it like that because for me, it was just life. Like, yeah, I grew up in the restaurant business. I grew up doing this. It's, it blew my mind that people did not know how to cook a pizza. It blew my mind that people did not know how to bread chicken, you know, or make chicken parm or like, I just didn't know. I thought it was normal that people would know that stuff and it's not. So I have a bunch of information and knowledge up here. Um, and anything I can answer, I will. My name's Rob Cologne or Bobby, depending on how you know me. And uh, this was my first Q&A for Cologne Pizza Consulting. Thanks. Are you still here? What, you got nothing better to do? You know what I love? right here like this chapter they talk about dough but then they have like a honey with like a look like who what, what kind of pizza dough uses honey I, mean, I don't know maybe maybe a special dessert pizza i don't know i'm out of here see you guys